I'm just pouring myself a glass of mead. You should pour yourself a glass, too. What's that? You don't have any mead? Well, luckily, YouTube Brew is here to help. Welcome to the how-to video for the second ever YouTube Brew Box, Liquid Gingerbread. The holiday seasons are fast approaching and we'd like to thank you for letting YouTube Brew be a part of your holidays. Few things are more festive than gingerbread and this mead tastes just like gingerbread. Just as if you poured yourself a glass of liquid gingerbread. As far as equipment, you won't need all that much. Just a bucket for sanitizing it, a bucket for fermenting it, a big long stirring spoon, a glass cup, a glass container. We're gonna make our yeast up in here. Uh, well, eventually you'll need a hydrometer, but not right now. An airlock and a piece of white chalk. I don't think that was supposed to be in there. You probably don't need this. Okay, let's do a little unboxing, shall we? Let's open this up. Can you see me? Inside we have our wonderful powders. Yeast, packet A, packet C, vanilla pod. Packet B, this is our spices. It look like Amazon packed that bag. Packet D. Graham crackers, molasses, and if you chose, they included honey. A little baggie, a little, little spice baggie, some caps, and our sanitizer. Oh, I forgot. And don't you forget, underneath all this packing hay is a uh, packet of desiccant. Don't eat this. And some labels for a finishing touch on your bottles. These are for later. You'll need the labels and the caps later. For today, brew day, you also won't need the vanilla pod, sachet D, which is stabilizers, you also won't eat the graham crackers. Those are for secondary. Don't eat these. It says so right there. Let's start by whipping up our sanitizer. Get all this stuff sanitized. Fill your bucket up with a gallon or two of water. Hot water. I prefer hot water. And add the contents of the sanitizer. Let's go ahead and take all of your items, your equipment, and toss them in that sanitizer water. We're going to want to sanitize our little spice bag, too. You're going to want to make sure you full sanitize everything. Your, your lid, your bucket, all of it. Just grab that little glass thing you got, pour some sanitizer in there, put the lid on, and Get it all mixed up. Get nice and nice to mixed up inside there. And let that sit for a while. Drink some mead. That is so good. Okay, and now we're gonna wait about two to five minutes. Let all this be all good and nice and sanitized. Okay, let's go ahead and prepare our yeast. Take your little vessel and fill it up maybe maybe half of the way with water. We recommend using bottled water over tap water so you can avoid all those chloramines or whatever, but do not, I repeat, do not use distilled water. Distilled water, no good. Bottled water, perfect. Tap water, acceptable, but it's better to use bottled water. So fill it up about, <sighs> fill it up about yay way with water. Now you're going to want to put this in the microwave and heat it up to about 101 degrees Fahrenheit. And then open sachet C and pour it in there. 
his preparation. Give that a good old, give that a good old mix up with your water here. Take there, just put your thing on top and just let it, you know, let it sit. Now we're gonna pour our yeast in there. Open up your yeast packet and they're impossible to open. Dang it. I'm gonna talk to the packing company. These are ridiculously hard to open. Pour the yeast in there on top of the, the stuff. Now you're gonna to wanna to let it sit like this for about five minutes. Then stir it vigorously again with your spoon. Let it sit for 10 more minutes. Then you wanna pour it into your thing. Try not to let it sit for longer than 15 minutes. Set this aside. Whilst I prepare the meat. Or at least. Oh my gosh. Everything's so hard today. So essentially what you want to do, you want to add 3.25 pounds of honey. We used sorghum honeydew honey. 3.25 pounds of honey and a, a, a gallon of water. Or 3.25 pounds of honey plus water to equal one gallon. If you ordered the honey option, the honey is pre-measured out for you. Pour these into the thing, add water to one gallon, mix it up, and then we'll move on to the next step. 3.25 pounds of honey. I'm going to add some water to this to one gallon and mix her on up. Okay, now to mix this up, you could take your handy dandy spoon and stir it vigorously to get all that mixed up as perfectly as possible. Or you can be like me and get one of these handy dandy drill stirrers. Ah. Put it on the lower setting. If you do use one of these drill stirrers, it's very important not to allow those plastic or metal paddles to touch the bucket or the glass. It could scratch it or break it. You're not actually stirring with those paddles, you're creating a vortex in there, and the vortex mixes the water honey together. I mix up my uh, little yeast and stuff solution stuff. Stir vigorously. Sachet A is your nutrients. You're going to want to add those to the bucket and mix it together. Now granted, I probably should have put this first so I wouldn't have to mix it twice, but uh, oh well. I'm not famous for doing things the easy way. Give it another mix. Now what you're doing when you're adding all those nutrients, you're essentially creating the perfect environment for microbes to grow. That's why it's so important to have a closed system, a sealed system with an airlock on here to stop anything from getting in there, because bacteria, fungus, anything. This really is the perfect environment for microbes to grow. You want yeast in there or nothing but yeast. It is. It is not stirred up very well, it's clumped on top, so uh, let's stir some more, shall we? I forgot the molasses. We have to add the molasses to this. So I'm gonna add molasses and then stir it up a third time. Remember how you talked about me not doing things the easy way? Everything's impossible to open these days. It's got this freaking seal on there. I'm gonna have a word with a packing company. You open this thing. Oh, oh, yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go, is that yummy? Oh, that's yummy. That's almost as yummy as honey. Molasses, in you go. Is 
it hard to get it all out of there? I'm going to use my little spoon handle to kind of coax as much of that out as I can. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now we got everything in there. Okay, let's stir this again. This is starting to become a lovely golden ginger color now. Once again, I'm gonna get my spoon to make sure I got it all, make sure there's no stragglers of honey or molasses left on the bottom. And that looks like we're all good to go. Now, we wanna add our super secret blend of spices to this. So, you wanna take the entire contents of packet B this bag was packed by Amazon. It used to be spices in the bottom of a big giant bag. Dig around your sanitizer bucket for your your little spice bag, the included spice bag. And shake off all the excess and transfer the spices into it. I wonder if I can do this. This is it's harder than it looks. Almost there. Almost got it. Almost got it. Ah! Okay, there. All the spices are from packet B into this set, this little tea bag looking thing here. Tie a knot in top to seal it, and, and there you go. Take your spice bag and drop her on in there. Just let that be, you know, just let it sit. Push it down, swirl it up with your thing. the yeast. Make sure it's all nice and... Did I say add the yeast? I meant to say pitch the yeast. Industry term. And there you have it. Seal the bucket. Put your airwalk on top. Where's the airwalk? And there we go. We gotta let this sit for, uh, um, I imagine it'll take seven to 10 days, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little more for the fermentation to complete. And then we're gonna move on to secondary. I'll see you in that video. Secondary, seven to 10 days after primary, you want to do the following. This actually took a little bit longer than I expected to ferment. It's been about two weeks, but now fermentation is finished. This is very complicated, so pay close attention. Take your graham crackers and your vanilla pod and put them in there. That's it. Pretty hard, huh? You want to open her on up. Some of you might feel a little more comfortable with some uh, sanitizer handy to sanitize your hands and or whatever, you know. But uh, if you're careful, it's not really all that necessary. Just take it. Ooh. It smells lovely. Open your graham crackers. And. Uh, I don't want to splash very much. And put your vanilla pot. Now I'm going to sanitize a little spoon to give that a bit of a mix. 
I said it would be a spoon, but actually, it's a knife. I'm just gonna get that a bit of a knock around. I'm gonna try not to stir up too much of the leaves on the bottom. I'm just gonna, those grab crackers gone all soggy and stuff now. I'm just gonna give them a little, a little doing, you know? Gotta mix them up, get them to do their thing. And there you go. Put your lid back on and I'm gonna go ahead and spray the bottom with some sanitizer. Just cause I'm weird like that. And reinstall the lid. And there you go. Put this back in a dark place and leave it alone for about a week. All those grack crackers are gonna sink to the bottom and release all of their yummy goodness flavors. And then you're ready to be finished. Rack it, cold crash it, or cold crash it, then rack it, then stabilize it, then bottle it. Enjoy your gingerbread meat. Once again, thank you for letting us be a part of your holidays.